Welcome, um, this was my first video with a voiceover, just, I wanted to do it because of how good the race was actually, um, starting from 6th place, not the best, but not the worst, I'd say, and getting up to 2nd, uh, this is not going to be the only voiceover I do, uh, I mostly do them for a lot of good races and won't do them for the highlights actually. I'm planning to do highlights of overtakes, things like that. But yeah, the race was really good. Um, didn't have much time to practice actually, only had an hour to practice for this race and we had like a month to practice actually, but I just didn't take the time out of my day to do it um mostly practicing for the manufacturers races which really ended up going pretty good uh i got 57th in my region it's not bad but i just wanted to do the voice over here so you guys can just understand what's going through my head you know through this whole race you know, give you more of an insight and it'll be a lot less boring than just watching the whole race actually. But let's begin. So here I wanna start it with traction control on uh, two to get the best launch possible. As you can see it worked out completely. Perfectly. Got on the inside of DS and he turned into me but what can you do? You already know this corner wreaks havoc for everyone. Uh, after after the start, I put the traction control to one to correct for any mistake I do. You know, I just didn't want the traction control to slow me down too much. But as you can see, DS overtook me and. I didn't want to uh, overtake him. I didn't want to fight too much. I wanted to get away from the from the group, as you can see back here. But I saw that he wasn't taking his corners correctly and overshot this one. On the first few laps, especially with the intermediate tires on, this tarmac is way too wet to take the regular racing line that you usually do. You'd have to break a couple meters earlier. And I guess he just didn't understand that I went off the track. As you can see, X passed me. Taking the corner a lot better than me. That corner really didn't want to take too fast. Just didn't feel comfortable to take full advantage of that corner. But I saw Diaz had a penalty and just let him through. Got back to first. And I have the Canadian right. It was actually really close behind me. Just kept pushing and then pounding really early on into the race. And you see the way I'm racing is leaving the corners in third rear. I didn't want the traction control to go off too much taking a lot of the power from the car and making me go a lot slower than I could than I should be going but Lumber got a better exit than me and overtook very clean overtake actually but break really early here for some reason but luckily I didn't get a penalty so I didn't want to fight too much unless I saw the advantage to take and I saw it right here and good thing I did actually, because as soon as that happened, three cars piled up right behind them. And I could have been stuck in the middle of that if I didn't overtake them actually. But as you can see, uh, me leaving in third gear from every corner helps a lot. It doesn't turn on the traction control as much, or at all, honestly. And it's crucial having a better exit, especially for these corners that have really long straights. So, 
you know, the less attraction control went on, the better for me. So, you know, I had a decent second gap, second and a half, and felt relatively comfortable with the track. At this point, it started getting a little more dry. I could take the lines that I would usually take in the breaking points that I would usually take during the qualifications and practice, the little practice that I had, but just going through smoothly and the, as you can see the dry line started to appear a lot more now so just try to keep it there and actually over it shot this corner but everybody else didn't just wreak havoc for everybody else luckily I didn't get hit I almost almost got pretty close to getting hit but it didn't happen it was, that's not gonna be the last time I ever shot that corner but every time I did it it really didn't affect me too much in position wise see everybody is right behind me X is right behind me even after that two second penalty that he got he's still caught up but still overall really calm though. the race is still young you know didn't want to push too hard there's no no point of doing that especially on these tires that aren't most grippiest to say, especially in cars that are going this fast. Even though we have the down force, you know, you don't want to push them too hard, especially in the fast little corners that I like to take. I like to just let go of the gas a little bit and let the car cruise through. But you know, just calmly going through everything and someone. Gets punted off the, the track and gets resetted. That's the worst thing that can happen, but that's a good example of why you want to be away from the pack and away from a lot of people because, you know, a lot of people don't understand that you can't just be right behind them, especially when it comes up to a corner, unless you 100% sure know where they're going to break. Usually you just want to break a little earlier than them and with the, with the draft that you get from them, you just catch up on the streets. A lot of people don't understand that. They just break when they break and think it's just going to work out like that, but they ended up punting the, the car right in front of them to the grass or the gravel. But it happened. Uh, it's racing. But on the fourth lap, it's really calm, taking everything right. I saw nitrous behind me, just not too close, but I saw him catching up little by little. I realized, you know, you're going around this track a lot faster than me, especially on the recording. As you can see on the radar, he's right behind me out to that corner. But you know, one thing we'll do is just not panic and just keep pushing. Just take your line, take your breaking points. You know, it works for you. You don't want to change too many things, especially when you're in the middle of a race. But obviously, there's times that you have to improvise and you can't do much about it. Most of the race just you know, very calm, very clean air, just not a lot of a lot of people trying to battle me or anything. A lot of people were saving their their overtake actually and I almost get hit and put it off. see on the on the wet meter indicator on the 
the bottom left corner. It's starting to dry up a lot more. This would be more or less a good time to switch into a softer compound. Now that the the rain is very light, then it's not gonna wet the tarmac anymore. But as you can see, 20 right next to me, and I heard he was using his overtake. You can hear the hissing sound, but. I let him go, but he overshot the corner and I hit him by mistake, but I knew he was going to come back. And I didn't want to go too wide around this corner, so I just let off his early and let him pass. So it's just us three up, up in front. It's a very good race, very, very close racing, uh, no pun in, you know, just keeping it clean. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to push too hard. I didn't want to fight them because I knew they were a lot faster. Than me. So I just let him pass through. It's no biggie, you know. But as you can see, oh, the lumber pitted. That he's using wet tires. Wet tires really are the best choice, or they're not even a good choice at all for this track. Mostly because as the track gets drier, you know, you start losing a lot of grip because it has too many of uh, too many deep grooves and not enough rubber touching the the asphalt. So you don't have as much grip as the intermediates. So you're just basically going way too slow around the track. You have to change tires. The only downside of having the intermediate tires at the beginning of the race is that the tarmac is so wet that it's basically just racing on ice. But after the third lap, it dried up pretty fast. And just from there, you can take your racing line as normal. Well. Not much to, to worry about slipping and sliding. But here, you know, I just didn't want to push too much. I just want to stay behind them. The, the dirty air you get from these cars is just incredible. You really can't, can't do much about it, but you know, I, they didn't go off too far. And this is when Nitro pitted for a softer compound. I knew I had to do it. I didn't honestly didn't know that I had to do this. Because in the last race I went through the whole race with them in intermediate tires and it really didn't end up working as well as it should. Your tires are so dead at the end of the race that they're worthless. You're going around the track two, three seconds slower, which makes the whole difference in the world. But I knew I had to pit. I had to change to a, a different compound. Preferably soft. As you can see, the, the track is way way drier, way drier now than it was at the beginning. So this is a perfect time to take out the soft compound and go around the track. Because staying on the intermediates when the, when the asphalt is dry is just going to pour them out too fast. And this is a perfect example of why I didn't want to go around this corner too fast. As you can see, just cost him the whole race just trying to go a little faster around that corner. But I realized I had to change tires so I decided to change on the eighth after the eighth lap. Which wasn't the worst choice in the world but could have been better. I could have pitted on the seventh lap. Mostly because I could have optimized the the usage of the soft tire a lot more than doing it on the A flat. I had a lot of life left at the end of the race.
pace with the our tires, mostly because I just pitted a little too, a lot late. But not much happened in this lap. So we're just gonna skip to the pit. So after changing to the soft tires, I got the penalty somehow. I don't know who I credit to this because this all the time, but it happens. You just get out the pit, you get a penalty as soon as it happens. But as you can see it I touched the wet spot on the on the track, the the dry line wasn't going over the the pit line so it was like basically sliding down the whole way but sport took me over sport overtook me and um, not much of a, a worry actually i knew he was on intermediate tires or wet tires so i'm a lot faster obviously with the three second penalty i didn't want to hit him or try to overtake him honestly unless i 100% knew I could take the gap and not cause any more penalties. But you know, I just stick behind them. And I saw the gap here. I tried to take it, but I saw he was right next to me. So slowed down. For some reason, he was using the overtake. And as you can see, Nitro passed by, already on the soft tires. So, knowing this information, I already knew he was on the softer compound. So it was just basically a chase to the finish line at this point. And 20x dope on um, He he didn't have any. Uh, pits, he didn't pit at all, so he just was running in the media the whole time. And sport proof, too. As you can see, he's taking a way wider line, mostly because his tires are so bad. As you can see, I'm going around this track a lot faster. Besides that one point where I took the, the wet spot on the track. But basically, this is just a a chase to the finish line. I, it was possible that I could have overtook him. I didn't end up overtaking him. I got second, but I could have gotten first if it wasn't for the three second penalty. Because the, the gap that I had after the last lap was two seconds. And it was going down the whole way through. Mostly because of me having the tires and going around the track a lot faster. As you can see, um, Spore has an immediate tires on. You can just see how slow he's going around the track. He's having a very difficult time keeping the car straight and, and going around the corner smoothly, but. It happens when, you know, you don't do your research and just study what possible outcomes you can have with different strategies, but hopefully you learn and went to the next race and tried it, but, uh, so 20X pitted and got, for some reason, intermediate tires. Which was a very, very huge mistake. If you would have gone on the soft, he definitely could have been a, a problem for me. But rather, you know, he changed back to intermediate, and you can see just how slow he is, even with the intermediate compared to me. I'm going around the track so much faster, I'm taking the corner so much faster, I'm bringing a lot later. But, back to the chase. Here, I knew it was a, about a three second gap to the first place. And I can see him out on the horizon, basically. I knew I could overtake him if I had a couple more laps, but it was, it was just too far. 
but every lap I was catching up. I'd say more than half a second to a second. Mostly because he had uh, older tires on, I was more on fresh compounds. But this outcome would have been a lot different if you know I didn't get the three second penalty. Yeah. If I would have pitted a little earlier, a lap earlier, would have been perfect. If I would have pitted on the seventh lap instead of the eighth. I could have optimized uh, the usage of the, the soft tires a lot more, but you know, it wasn't a bad choice what I did, it could have been better, and that 3 second penalty would have just made a world of a difference because I was ahead of Nitro, but that 3 second penalty just let him fly through and both know that that three second penalty is more than three seconds. The gap that you you get from the car in front of you is tremendous, especially that the penalties are on the straight. That makes it even worse. But as you can see on the final lap, I was so close. I was just hoping he'd mess up. But he did it. He brought it home. You know, kudos to him. He did a good race. Very clean racer, actually, you know. Very good racer. But it's just me and him going to the finish line. Not much of a challenge, actually, but you can see just how the people in the back just have intermediates just going around the track so much slower. As you can see, Sport with tires that are basically dead. If this was really actually F1, those tires would have been pumped. But you can see Dunn's, how he has racing soft, he's actually pitted, so he's so much faster than him. Let's see if he can get four, four. Not the cleanest overtake, but he got the job done, you know. Uh, he was ahead of him, so maybe he could have just let him pass through. That corner isn't very... Uh, the best corner to overtake, but he, he got the job done. Uh, but yeah, that was most of the race. Um, outcome could have been way different, but I'm very happy with the outcome I got. Didn't have much practice around the, the track, actually. I'm pretty surprised I did this well. You know, I adapted really quick when it hit. Within those two hours of practice, I already knew more or less what I had to do, and just and I hope that I did the first race. The second race, I got second place. I remember the first race, I got six. Not too bad. Um, I got the fastest lap, so no, can't get any better than that. Besides getting first, but it happens. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Like and subscribe. I'm gonna make more videos like this. Um, for the new upcoming events, the new season for the manufacturers, and you know, daily races. I'll do those too, and online races too. You know, things that have a lot of. A lot of overtakes, things like that. I don't want to bore you guys with just me coming in first place with a gap of five seconds to the second place. You know, it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but uh, you know, I had to do a voiceover this video, especially this race of how good it came out. You know, starting at six with the perfect launch that I got, and you know the the small little overtakes that I did, things like that. But I hope you guys like the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you until next time.